Hey, listeners. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we love all the support. And if you can, please donate on our Patreon page. We love all the support that you guys give us, and you guys make this show happen. We have lots of fun tiers, like listening to an episode and drinking with us on Drunken Discordly, or voting for drinks that we drink on air, like hot dog water and vodka. Anyways, on to the episode... Episode 69, Getting Stoned and Dropping Acid. Do you like liquor and things that go boo? Then buckle up, listener, because this one's for you. Prepare yourself for the Hideous Laughter Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast, episode 69. Nice. 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 <laughs> so, I want to start with what we're drinking. Steve and I are the 69 pair from last time, so we'll go last. Emily, what you got? I have a caramel apple cider this evening. Not bad. Yeah, refreshing and sweet. Speaking of refreshing and sweet, Haley, what you drinking? Oh my gosh, that was the <laughs> nicest you've ever been. Um, I am actually splitting a drink with Brooks. Uh, I was it was given to me by Nathaniel slash Cato on the Discord. It's Great Blake's coffee infused hard cider. Uh, Brooks is a huge coffee fan, so um, we're gonna split that. And then I also have a side drink, which is from the Colony Meadery, which is Limey the Ginger. Speaking of someone who's, well, he's not a ginger, but he's close. Brooks, what you drinking? <laughs> well, uh, like Kaylee said before, splitting the drink from our good friend Nathaniel and also a uh, caramel vodka cider. But I'm going to start with the coffee, start with the coffee. cider. <sighs> Speaking of things I don't want to start. Oh boy, Griff. This is a rough one. <laughs> it's so dirty. <laughs> it's greasy, boys. No, oh. it's it's literally dirty water looking. So Steve yeah. for this special uh episode sixty nine occasion, thank you for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I wouldn't have it any other way, Griff. Uh you know. Would you like me to take the listener through what we're drinking? Yeah, please explain. The listener. So, so there was a, a joke. A couple weeks back one. that um, Griffin and I, or at some point, the polls were going to get so bad that someone was going to throw something like hot dog water on there. Um, yeah, you suggested it. Today is that and day. Today, this has always been is you. Day, guys. Um, I, don't, I don't know who's, whose fault this is. It's yours. You have been perpetuating it for a while. But, it, but Griffin and I are drinking vodka and hot dog water. Um and then uh, we realized that that might be literally not palatable, so we put pickle juice and celery salt in there. And, uh, guys, it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Cheers, cheers buddy. Some cheers, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it does grow on you, though. Yeah, it's it's pretty salty. Yeah. But, like, a hot dog-themed drink on episode 69, how much better could it get? I couldn't think of one thing that would be better than this. Nope. I, I stand by, I think you should have drinking it out of a hot dog straw. What, so we could just have the tip of a hot dog in our mouths for the entire rest of the episode? No, because eventually they'd get drunk and then they'd eat the hot dog and then I'd have to edit out all the... Oh, um, yeah, um, you, uh, you know yeah. I'm eating half the hot dog before the episode's over. Yep, it might just happen by mistake when you're sucking oh, up liquid through it. Oh, so the whole thing. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the boy's 69, <laughs> hot dog's flying around. God damn it. But I think everybody else has to roll off because that counted as a double fail. So, Brooks and the girls... God damn it. Six. 
That's okay. I got a five. Oh, oh 16. I'm golden. Oh. Nice. All right. Emily's next. I guess you're not getting hot dog water unless we bring it back. Mm. <laughs> We're not bringing it back because she's in charge of the poll. Hot dog water and cider. It's so hot weird. Dog water and cider. <laughs> <laughs> now it's fancy. So Steve brought the hot dog water from home. <laughs> <laughs> hot dogs for dinner. Brought it in a water bottle. And this shit. Had so many floaters in it. I was, uh, I was really uh, scared that something would happen. Like I'd get pulled over or something and a policeman would look <laughs> in my window and <laughs> see oh. a light and it would, because just, it was so grainy in there. He'd be like, oh, that's not just water. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's clearly not water. So it's something that shouldn't be in a water bottle. So he's immediately going to be like, Hey, bro, are you drinking and driving? Like what is in that bottle? And then I would have to explain it. <laughs> uh, that it's just a bottle of room temperature hot dog water <laughs> <laughs> in the cup holder of my car. You know, sir, I'm going to have to take you in for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, it's not it's not great. But um, speaking of not great, you guys got into a bit of a situation. So... You fought last episode a faceless flesh golem flanked on all sides by homunculi. You defeated it, but not without great pain to your party as a whole. I think two of you went down, and Ikmer was pretty close. You finished up that combat. You decided to barricade the door in this room because this room only has one entrance and exit. Matumbe took first watch, and the rest of you went to sleep. But your sleep was interrupted very swiftly by a skittering across the ceiling and then the wall. And then the window being busted open by a claw from this gargantuan creature that looked with its bright, glowing yellow eyes into the room, tentacles writhing around it, and it moaned. And the moan, while Matumbe was the only one that wasn't affected by it, the rest of you are in a state of panic, but almost like sleep paralysis. You're awake and feel like you can't move. Matumbe, this creature is just outside the window, and you hear its legs scuttling outside disgustingly like a huge crab. It looks at you, seeing that you're not affected by its grotesque-sounding moan, and it just kind of, you can't tell if it's smiling or grimacing at you. And it just starts to laugh. And Matumbe looks at this thing dead in the eye, or maybe eyes, back, and just says, What? You can't find your way in here? We're ready for you, my friend. And it continues to scuttle, and it you see it leave the window. You see it pass by the second window, and you can hear it moving on the roof, and it, it gets more quiet. You're not sure if it's gone off or if it is just waiting there for you. So at this point, uh, Matumbe is going to uh, finally turn away from the windows if he's convinced it's at least gone from that part of the building that he can look in and cause some more harm. He's going to take a look at his companions to see what he has to do. Are they still in this uh, state of sleep paralysis? They appear to be laying on the ground, eyes wide in fright but none of them are saying anything or making any sounds besides heavy breathing. Okay, so right off the bat, um, Matumbe still has a level one spell left called Remove Fear. With Remove Fear, I can hit two people to get them out of any sort of frightened condition, which it appears 
that doesn't get rid of the paralyzed, does it? It probably would not. I don't think so. But it'll at least, like, get your wits back about you. It's something. Oh, because if that's what you're going for, like, don't worry about me. Okay. Because I was just going to redo my will save real quick. All right. Well, then I don't have to worry about you. That's cool. So uh, then I have two folks. I'm going to hit Ick and Lyra with it. Cool. He casts them remove fear. And they are no longer afraid. After a few moments, the paralysis wears off as well. Everybody quick to your feet. I think we may need to reinforce this room if we want to stay here the night. Eclipse, are you okay? I just, I have, a, I have like a quick question. Does getting rid of the feared condition make it so that I, like, you're no longer paralyzed for a while? That's all. Yes. Oh, okay. Then I would just use my temp- temporary clarity gift and uh, give the lopper a point of influence and then get rid of all fear effects. Oh, nice. Won't ever come back and harm me. That goes up to four. Correct. But it's almost sunrise. Almost. Go play it fast and loose but with not these quite. points of influence. <laughs> Better hope I let you sleep. It doesn't matter about sleep. Well, you'd be fatigued after oh, a yeah. while, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> so, are you barricading the rest of the room? You have... Uh, yeah. A window or two or three that you might want to shut her up. Especially because now you can hear the wind kind of whipping in this this window that the glass has been broken in, and you hear the storm still outside. Are there actual shutters on the inside? I'll say yeah. Hmm. Not not closed right now, but yeah, it would, they would have it would have shutters. Hey guys, do you think I should um, set a trap or? place a haunt or do something to protect us or is that too much we've heard quite a bit going on in this area I don't think it would hurt to have a little bit more warding for us there's still something else that was moving in the room next door that sounds good to me Eclipse so maybe if while you're doing that maybe like Ick and Ick, oh Jesus Ick and Matumbe um, like maybe move another one of these bookcases to try and cover another window or two. Meanwhile, Lyra might be like shuttering up the windows and stuff. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I just, I imagine, I guess I imagine Eclipse because I've got open clothes too, so I don't have to reach anything. I would just <laughs> close everything that I can. Oh, nice. Uh, just because it's like a quick that's can smart. trip. Yeah, so I don't have to go, no one has to go near the window. Like I can okay. just literally sh- shoot Perfect. out. I could extricate a haunt there and um, put it on a window, but it's only one. The only traps I can do are, like, one per- at a time. And I see now that there are four windows, and I do not have the ability to set four traps. I've got, like, one left in the tank before I actually have a good night's sleep. Well, you might want to use it on the one that's already been busted open, because the other ones, you're going to have some warning it's going to be pretty easy to hear a window shatter in the same room as you. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to extricate my haunt for one of my last mental focuses until sunrise. It'll go off when uh, when the command goes off, basically. Okay. So, it hasn't been very long. You've You were only asleep for like 20 minutes. So I imagine Matumbe continues to keep watch. The 20 minutes counted off my time, though. <laughs> it's for anyone keeping track. So you guys go to sleep, and you take turns keeping watch. Matumbe, why don't you roll me a perception check? Sure thing, Griff. 21. With a 21, you hear the faint sound of fluttering. Hmm. Coming from somewhere above you, you're not sure if it's in the building or outside of the building. But you listen for it. You think you hear something, and then and then you kind of 
zero in since you have all this time to just kind of sit and think and observe. And yeah, it's definitely some kind of wings. Hmm. Curious. Um, as he's sitting there too, Matumbe also wants to be reflecting on what he just saw. Um, I'd like to roll a knowledge check, please. Sure. That would be Arcana. 25. With a 25, you know one thing. Uh, separately from that knowledge check, I mean, I, I, my question, do I just, do I know what this is at all? You, you think it's some sort of construct. Oh my. Okay. Like a flesh golem. Uh, it, it looks somewhat stitched together, made of different parts when you saw it through the window. And it had, Larry's kind of weird, eerie, trademark, glowing eyes, although its were yellow, where Larry's are normally green. Okay. So I'm thinking as it jammed its, like, claw tentacle thing in, um, maybe it, like, overextended itself or something, and Matume could see if it had any sort of, like, special defenses. It opens itself up a little bit. Yeah, it certainly does. Make sure, uh, Lyra or Emily is writing this down. Because you will face this eventually. This creature has DR. Now you're you're not positive what it's against, but you think if it's similar to what you just faced, it's probably adamantine. It's got construct traits, so it's immune to a lot of like mind affecting fortitude saves, that kind of thing. Um, it's also immune to magic. Okay. And then over the course of his uh, two hour or so shift, whatever we decided, um, Matumbe is going to stay vigilant, but he's going to be writing a lot in his book. He hasn't really had time to do that lately. I think my nights have been pretty, um, pretty rough. Like I, I, I know all through the trial, Ick and Matumbe were surviving on no sleep. So he hasn't had time to really, uh, study his spell book and really, t- really dive into some of those more obscure teachings in the chapters of the bones land of the spiral. So he's kind of getting back to his roots here as he, uh, begins to be ready to get his spells repowered. Who's next in watch. I thought we said Ikemaru was going to be last because he wouldn't need the uninterrupted. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking eclipse could go next. Okay. Matumbe heads to sleep. Eclipse, go ahead and make a perception check. Neat. 13. Yeah, with a 13, your friends have been telling you they're hearing stuff in this building, but it seems eerily quiet to you. Unless it's any disguises, or, uh... (laughs) You know, if I look out the window with my (laughs) spyglass... I mean, you could certainly do that. It's night and it's a storm. I, I don't know how much that'll give you, but no, I'm just I'm just fucking with you. I, I just rolled bad. So yeah, you don't really notice anything, but you remain unbothered for your two hour watch or however long you're taking. Uh, and Lyra is next to stay up. Neat. At that point, Lyra probably sees what is mostly the lopper smiling back at her while she while Eclipse lays down, because I've lost almost all control of my body. Lyra would like, rub her eyes and think she's just kind of, you know, that weird thing when you're still kind of half asleep, you don't quite know if what you're seeing is real or not. So she she might just brush past it. And you'd hear, <laughs> night night. As Eclipse then lays down and drifts off. Go ahead and make me a perception check. <laughs> You're all the same as me. Nine. Oh, <laughs> even worse. Guys, you're supposed to be watching out. Come on. Yeah. She got distracted by the lopper. You don't notice this. And I think Lyra maybe paces for a time back and forth and around the group of her friends sleeping in the center of the room. And she never gets a glimpse 
of the glowing yellow eyes watching her across the room. Ikmer, it's your turn. All right. Besides sharpening his sword during the the time that he's up, he's also going to well, try to fashion a like, a quick attachment for the cup uh, so that it's a little bit easier to take off and put back on. Sure. Nothing like mechanical advantage, but but like it's, it's he knows he's been using it frequently and he wants it an easier grasp. Yeah. I imagine it would be pretty easy for him with a small piece of rope or a um, maybe a scrap of leather from his older armor to fashion like a little strap that kind of hangs off the side where the cup might be, and he could just kind of slide it up off. Oh yeah, yeah. That or, I mean, I was picturing him using the any tool, but oh yeah, with like yeah, a carabiner the type of. Cool. <laughs> the any tool becomes a carabiner. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sweet. So make me a perception check as you're doing this. All right. Well, everybody knows Ikmer is the best at percepting. He's really, really perceptive, uh, poking at the, the statue and the dead body uh, with a one. Yeah, he feels like the body moves after he pokes at it, and he freaks out for a minute. And... Doing that, he probably bumps into the statue and knocks off the like the arm or a finger or something. Yeah, he's like um, he's like Shaggy and Scooby in a haunted hotel right now, where or a haunted um, a haunted museum right now, where they always end up bumping into things, and it's not the not the creature until it is. Mm. <laughs> but he too doesn't notice anything amiss. He doesn't hear anything outside, and dawn comes. What are you guys doing? Well, I think because we heard noises in the uh, room to the north, correct? That's the north? Yep. Then I think that we don't want to go through it quite yet. I think we should. Sure come out to the lobby and then go south. Okay. So you unbarricade the door and head out into the lobby. You guys have seen kind of what's in the in the lobby. A bunch of kind of alchemically preserved creatures. You also note that Above the entrance, it does say the Living Museum. That's what this whole place is called. You see a door to the north and a door to the south. And you had heard noises coming from the one in the north, so you head south. You see a placard above both of these doors as well. The one heading south says things of the sea. The one to the north says beasts of dark reputation. Oh, we are staying away from dark reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Lyra is all about creatures of the sea. She is so excited. Eclipse is slightly interested in the uh, dark side. But we'll totally go to the sea to help Lyra, you know. Okay. So, you want to give me your marching order? For sure. I think that would be fairly typical, which is uh, Matumbe and then either me or Matumbe and then uh, the other one of us and then Lyra. Okay. So you open the door and you're greeted by a very large skeleton hanging from the ceiling. It appears to be that of a sea cow and it's set on some iron rungs. You also see a bunch of jars on shelves within the room containing alchemically preserved octopi, tube worms, uh, the head of a fish-like creature, uh, a strange eel-like creature with fangs, and a... You almost think it's like a mermaid-like creature, but the upper body is a monkey and the tail is a fish. 
have a legitimate question that I uh, hope doesn't sound silly. But is a sea cow a manatee? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys walk into this room, make a perception check, and uh, you could also give me a knowledge nature check if you if you so have it. Uh, does a twelve on that perception get me anything? No, you guys need like a single wisdom character. Jesus. No, I literally rolled a four and a three. <laughs> I rolled a 12 and got a 12. Nice. Lyra's really excited. She got a 20. Okay. It's going to be as a 24 on the perception, and then the knowledge you said nature? Yes. 18. Okay. With that knowledge nature, you know that the monkey creature is what's called a ninjago. Hmm. And they're relatively rare around here. Uh, does, does he know where it may have came from or what region it's native to? Uh, I believe they're they occur around the shackles. Oh, so he? Uh, yeah, he would. He would probably. Yeah, yeah, he would approach that and be, "Hmm, my friend, you are far from home, aren't you? Why are you talking to a skeleton?" <laughs> well, I don't expect the skeleton can hear back, but this little fellow is. <laughs> Commonly found in these shackles, a, a region of Galarian that I needed to travel through to get up north here for Lorimer's funeral. And as he examines the creature, and it, it's not a skeleton, it's actually pretty oh, well preserved. Sure, okay. Mm. Its eyes open. Oh dear. And it kind of like silently screams at you, but it's it's in this jar and it you know, it's it's pretty much trapped in this bell jar. But it's like pushing up against the wall. Eclipse would like to use a sleight of hand to use ventriloquism and scare it. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> sure, what'd you what roll? What do I have to roll against it? Perception. Oh boy. Sorry, I couldn't pass that up. No! You, no doubt, I have no doubt you scared me with a three on the tie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I throw my voice. What, you said it was screaming? Yeah. Get me out! Get me out! You too, man! I didn't do it. But, but, I mean, you're the one that's talking to it. <laughs> Dear God. I'm but, sorry. I mean, at this point, do I let it out? No. Get me uh, out! So, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Matsume is going to, uh, to run through my alignment checks on this thing to see if it's, like, alive or something. Not that I believe that, <laughs> that you're Are getting you it sure? out. Yeah, actually, yeah. let's find out. Not that I believe a clip. Let's find out. No, it's actually a will save to see if you believe it or not. All right, how about a 22? Oh. Oh yeah! And you, are we standing next to each other? You definitely don't more. believe it. <laughs> he just looks at Ikmer, slightly shakes his head, <laughs> looks at Eclipse, slightly shakes his head. He's a disappointed father right now. <laughs> uh, so okay. you cycle through the alignments. Yeah, it looks to be neutral evil. Mm. Uh, you imagine, and it's pretty easy to tell. This is some kind of undead, Ninjago. This spirit, unfortunately, cannot rest here. I am sorry for its soul. So, Lyra, while the rest of the group is <laughs> doing this, <laughs> you find a secret door. Ooh. And it leads to a spiral staircase up. After all of those shenanigans, which Lyra also disbelieved, uh, she'll motion the group over I found another door and she'll let Ikmer go through first okay uh, see a guy thing I don't know <laughs> hope you make it back home I guess okay so you guys head up the stairs yeah yeah you see through this entryway things of the air the stairway leads up 
and you can see three dissected preserved harpies in bell jars in this uh-uh, room. Oh, fuck that. There are jars containing what appear to be stuffed bats, and you see the skeletal front legs and head of a creature that appears to have both avian and feline features. You also see a wing that's massive and it appears to be slowly losing its feathers. There's a ladder that leads to a trap door in the ceiling as well as a door heading to the north. So what would you like to do? Um, Matume's going to look to the rest of the group and say, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but while I was taking my watch early last night, I heard something fluttering about upstairs. Uh, Now that we are in this creatures of the air room, I thought maybe I would see something flying around here. I also heard scuttling as our friend, the big giant fiend, a flesh golem, I should say, went upstairs. I don't know if he went to this level or somewhere else, but let's proceed with caution. We're not alone here. After hearing that, Lyra detects magic on the air creatures here. She doesn't detect any magic. You could make a uh, knowledge arcana check. Yes. Twenty. Twenty-two. Yeah, you guys would know the one kind of half-skeletal creature is a griffin. The oh no, <laughs> he's he dead. <laughs> he dead from all that hot dog water. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And the the wing is large enough, in your opinion, it might be the wing of a rock. Wow. That's cool. That's all. But yeah, you don't... Cool. Uh, nothing, nothing in here appears to be moving. Nor magical. And so what about going up the ladder trapdoor? Uh, let's make one perception check around the room. Uh, so we missed something. Wow, I'm on a roll of ones. Oh yeah, me too. Thirteen? Uh, twenty-nine, not twenty. Dang. Not twenty? Yeah. Twenty-nine? Unless it's a disguise. (laughs) It's not a disguise. (laughs) You find a few um, vials that appear to have fallen behind one of the displays. Okay. They're labeled, and each one contains one dose of violet venom. Neat. Can I know more about that? Violet venom is a um, is a contact poison. A DC 13 fortitude save, frequency once per minute for six minutes, and cure is one save. It deals 1d2 strength and con damage every minute. Cool. Hmm. All right. Uh, is that, if that's it, then uh, I'd say upstairs to go. Okay. You head upstairs. What's your marching order upstairs? Same as before. So, Ikmer heads upstairs. He peeks his head up through the trap door and into the next room. It looks relatively empty, and as he throws the trap door over, he hears a click and then a hiss. No! Fuck. I'm sorry, I wanted to give this to you. DC 31 to notice this trap. Oh, oh yeah. are not 20. <laughs> yeah. There's no Oof. hope. This acid fog 
fills the room Ikmer was just in as well as this room that everybody else is in. You all take... Eight points of acid damage. I'm going to scramble down the stairs. Like Scooby-Doo style, scramble down the stairs. As you start moving... Well, so roll, roll initiative for me real quick. Oh, boy. All right, all right. I rolled a 17 and then an 18, so I have to go with the lowest, which is 17 plus one is 18. Nice. Lyra? 23. Ikmer? 21. Matumbe? Emily, what's that mod? Plus six. Wow, plus everybody five. beat you at the 18. <laughs> I was so proud of that. <laughs> and I'm sorry, that means Matumbe is first, right? Uh, Lyra. Lyra, this acid fog surrounds you. You can only move at half speed. You can't really see very well. It's also choking you. And you you really feel like you're going to keep taking this damage as it burns your skin. Does it seem heavier or lighter than air? Is that a leading question for something else I can give you? I, it doesn't, in my, in my spell descriptions, unfortunately, it doesn't say the fog is lighter than air. I was thinking like smoke, you know, where you want to drop down and crawl on the, on the ground versus... Uh, you know, Matumbe might be in the clear because he's real tall. <laughs> yeah, it, it it feels like it's just emanating in this in the room above in this room. And um, I thought you were going with the like, can I use a gust of wind and blow it away? No, I was going with I'm three foot three, so yeah, it's filling the entire room. Okay, but it doesn't seem, or maybe she doesn't know this. It doesn't seem like it would spread out or like go down the stairs it seems like it's in just this area or no way of knowing. You can't really see where you're in the corner of the room you can't even see the stairs so you can't really tell that. Lyra did just come up from the nice safe aquatic room so she's going to try to make her way back down. Do I need to make a check for that? If you want to move full speed, you have to make an acrobatics check. Otherwise, you can move half speed. If I fail the acrobatics, do I just move at half speed anyway? I think it's like blind, where you um, where you don't move at all if you fail it. Not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure that's... All right, well, she'll make it to the stairs and start going down, but I don't think she'd make it all the way down. Okay, so she makes it to the stairs and looks down the stairs. She can't see more than five feet down the stairs. So it appears to be in the staircase. Ah. Uh, well, she wouldn't keep going down the stairs then if it's in the staircase. Would she like to double move? Uh, yeah. So, if she's right at the top of the stairs, she's kitty corner to the door can she spend a move action to open the door from where she's at yep all right then she will open the door and say it's going downstairs too sounds more like <laughs> it's going yeah downstairs. uh matumbe uh matumbe is going to uh, hear that and go through the door okay he moves at half speed so 10 20. Is he still in fog? Nope. He is no longer in fog outside the door. Sweet. And what does he see? It appears to be a storage room. Okay. He's going to shout back to the rest of the party. Come through the door. Leah opened and this on the north side of the room. I think the air is safe here. And then he's going to give the rest of the party a little bit of room. So. Okay. So he double moves in. Ikmer. He will first scramble down the down the ladder. Yeah, after yeah, because he's up in the up in the other room. So correct after that costs probably. Well, you could do it faster if you drop down, or if you. Um, but that'll be an acrobatics check if you drop down. 
Otherwise, you can make a climb check to go down it quickly, or you can just use a movement to get down it. Sure, I will try a climb, but that is all after uh, closing the trap door, so hopefully to block off the source of the acid. 19 on the die brings the climb check to a 19. Yep, he's perfectly fine getting down that ladder quickly. Okay, he's going to follow Matumba's voice. So you have about five more feet of movement, unfortunately, because you can only move at half speed through the fog. That's fine. Then he is going to end up in the very center of this room. Okay. Eclipse. Half speed, right? Yep. All right. Until you're out of the fog. So that's ten feet for me? Yep, ten feet, and you make it out of the fog. All right. Is it also difficult to rain? Or are you penalizing me twice? No, it, it just took ten feet to like move your first part of your movement because you're still in fog, and now that you're out of it, you can move the rest of your movement regular. So you can move 15, 20 now out of it. Okay. So I only moved five total feet. Yeah, but it was ten because you were still in fog. So now you're out of fog. Okay. So I move 10 feet and I'm out of fog. Uh, after that, I'll move another or 10 feet to the west. Yep. Make a perception check. Out of the way. Another natural 20 for a uh, 29. You hear the flapping of wings and you see distinctly two creatures with wings coming out of the sides of their heads and snakes writhing around as their hair as these two Medusa-looking creatures uh, uh, appear. I still have a little bit of movement left. Can I draw something? Well, attempt to draw something? Yep. Well, you've only taken a move action. You've only taken a move action, so you can take a standard action. Okay, cool. So I will attempt... To pull out um, a mirror if I see something similar to Medusa things. Smart. So I'll take it out. It just, just it does just take me a standard action, so that's not as bad as I thought. And now I have the mirror that has the little girl spirit stuck in it. Lovely. So these two Medusa-like heads. One of them flies around Eclipse to the center of the room to avoid that AOO and then shrieks. Oh. Okay. I need everybody to make a will save. This is a sonic mind affecting fear effect. <laughs> If any of those wow. impact you. <laughs> Even us in the other room? It's yes. It, it, okay. you, you can all hear it. Okay, I'm going to use my Tenacious. Definitely wanted to do that. Okay. I doubled my, my roll, at least. Okay, that's good. So uh, let's go around the table. Matumbe, what you got? Um, I think I'm okay. I got I got up to a 19. Yeah, this this shriek is kind of bone shaking, but it, mm -hmm. it you've heard sound bursts that were more damaging. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ikmer? I am at a 14. Okay, Ikmer, you are shaken for four rounds. What about Eclipse? 28. Eclipse, you shrug that off easy peasy. I was ready for these guys. Got my mirror. I technically have earplugs in my pocket. <laughs> They're not in. Not <laughs> yet. Put them in. But I'm ready. What about Lyra? Nine. With a nine, Lyra is also shaken for... Oh, also four rounds. Ugh. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Two rounds. Oh, that's better. I missed my... Uh... The, co the colors fucked with me. Mm, These mm. new dice. Uh, the second shrieking head goes up to Eclipse and attacks her. 
with a bite. Does a 20 hit? Uh, no. Okay. It does not hit you. Actually, well, no, you saw them fine. Yeah, you're totally not flat-footed, so you're good. Yeah. Um, next thing that's going to happen is Ikmer and Lyra, now at the top of the round, are each going to take... 10 points of acid damage. Oh, no. Ew. I... Do not look great. And it's Lyra's turn. But you're still conscious, right? Yeah. All right. You were shaken. Yeah, I I have it on. Lyra's going to move out of the room, even though she knows there's something in the next room, but she's got to get out of the fog. Yep. That sounds like a plan. 10, 20, and you're out. Uh, She's going to move to the side and stand next to Matumbe. Okay. Thank you. I'll give him that plus one AC. Until I move up to hit this thing. Uh, Lyra starts singing. Sounds good. Matumbe, you're up. All right, that singing was the confidence Matumbe needed to get into action. First of all, he's going to shout back into the room, Ikma, get out here, we are under attack. Also, just stop taking acid damage. Dick, <laughs> we're in the room taking acid. Um, and I'm, I want to roll a knowledge check on these things. That would be relige. Okay, not my best work. A 21 on the relige. 21 should get you two questions. Special defenses, special attacks. I think we've already seen one special attack, at least. These are basically flying Medusa heads as you sure as you learn they are undead okay they don't really have have any special defenses per se I mean aside from undead traits but their special attacks they have that scream which causes um causes a shaking condition, you do know that you can only be affected by a Medusa's scream once per day. Okay. So, it, it's specific to the Medusa's head. So, the other one could scream and you sure. might be affected as well. You also know they have a petrifying bite which will turn you to stone. Okay, that's scary. I don't like that. Um, okay. But it's time for him to start getting to work. So, it looks like there's some sort of bench or something between him and the Medusa. You can still see it fine. It, it's just that. It's a bench. Okay, so can I... It looks to be basically taking up the entire five-foot square. Could I, like, hop up onto it so I can see this thing eye-to-eye and go to town? Yeah, you definitely could. Sweet. So, is going to run ten feet up. He hops up on this bench, so he's looking straight at this Medusa. I've got power attack turned on. I'm ready to rock and roll here. Make me an acrobatics check just for fun. Okay. Uh, acrobatics, 12? He looks slightly less clunky than he usually does yeah, getting up there. Nice. That's nice. But just slightly. Just slightly. Yeah. <laughs> this basketball player is actually jumping for once? He's <laughs> <laughs> not jumping for this free throw. <laughs> okay, so after all said and done, I've got a 19 to this attack roll. 19 to hit? Yes. 19 hits. Sweet. 12 points of damage. Okay. Next in the order is Ikmer. In order to get out of the room, it's taking 20 feet of movement. Yep. He barely gets out, coughing up a storm. Doesn't look great. He is uh, going to double move and be right next to Matumbe standing on the bench, but he will not actually be on the bench. Oh, so you don't, you're not going to roll me in acrobatics too? To get I, bench I, to bench? Oh boy. Not so good at that, there's for, a reason, especially right now. There's a reason these boys are sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that's been Ick. Eclipse. Alright. You have one right up in your face. The other one is roughly 10 feet behind you, flying in the air. Well, this one's flying, too, but it's right in front of you, so. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, can I like just pocket the mirror since I don't need it? Yes, you okay. well move action. Move action, pocket yep. it, and then I will swing with uh, my axe. It was good thinking on your part. I thought I thought uh, yeah. it was gonna be a great uh, idea. Uh, yeah. Traditionally, a Medusa, yeah, would. I was like, fuck that! I'm not gonna turn to stone, stone, but I still might be. So you know, whatever. Meta Gamerson screams from the other room. <laughs> Does a ten hit? It does not. I didn't what know you could. Shot. Was that a natty one for you? A two. Okay. No, three. A oh, three. Yeah, that doesn't hit. But it is their turn. The one in front of Eclipse is going to scream. I need everybody to make a another will save. Oh man. Oh wait, I'm I'm already shaken. Do I have to uh, redo it? If I get I if four? I get another four, you're gonna get it for another round. And That's the only bad thing. This okay. was a fear effect. This is a fear effect. So everybody gets a plus two because Lyra is singing. Nice. Oh, aren't you the cool kid in school? Yeah, I help. Oof. <laughs> no. My total is a three. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god! All right, it, where you're, uh, you're not shaking for any more rounds. It doesn't. Still at it does three. not gonna extend past where you're already shaken. I I got a nineteen off the die. I think yep, I you're good. I got an eighteen total. Eighteen total saves. Twenty two. Twenty two. You're good to go. Hey, uh, by the way, I did forget that Lear was saying, "Does a twelve hit?" <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly enough, no. What? Crazy. All right. All right. The other one's going to attack at Matumbe. In harm's way. Attacked at it. Oh, thanks, Bob. Natty four will not hit. Cool. It's then going to five foot fly back. So put it over the other bench. Yeah, perfect. Next in the order is Lyra, as nobody is in the acid cloud to take that damage. Lyra stops singing, but it echoes. She takes a five foot step up, touches reaches up, touches Ikmer on his shoulder and casts Cure Moderate Wounds saying, let the water wash away your pain. Yeah, you do need to go to a wash station when you take acid burns like that. Ooh, yes. Do they have uh, the proper safety measures like a safety shower, eye wash station? Well, Ikmer in particular knows that they distinctly do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all of that rolled into one. You get 17 points of health back. Whoa. Hot mama. He feels 50% as good as if he would at full health. <laughs> Thanks for the updates. <laughs> Are you exactly, exactly at 50%? Because so am I. Um, 83 doesn't ex- like exactly divide into two very well, but mm-hmm. 42 is pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. Yeah. All right. Matumbe. Matsume is also going to take a five foot step forward. I'm coming down off the bench. I don't know if you. Oh, just make me another flavor acrobatics. <laughs> flavor batics. I shouldn't be letting you do this difficult terrain, but you're also seven feet tall. I'm sure you could step on a bench and over a bench. Got that eight. That eight. Yeah, this time you stumble a little bit. <laughs> you keep your feet. <laughs> Matsume is lumbering across this room. Maybe should have just went around the bench, but here we go. He's going to swing again with the book. Uh, 15 to hit. It does not hit. Yeah, that's a bummer. We're getting closer to that AC. Ickmer. All right. Well, feeling a lot better after Lyra's uh, guiding words and healing. Still feeling shaken, though. (laughs) (laughs) I am. I am. But for one less round. Okay, you had this thing. Coming at you. Technically, it's the opposite of headless. <laughs> like, all it is is head. <laughs> Real ULGY situation. <laughs> ULGY. Alright, the, uh, the gold die is going to be my first attack. Alright, things are looking decent. Alright, uh, does a 26 hit? That does. Awesome. Does a 17 hit? Nope. Okay. Well, with that, 
I deal nine damage. Okay. Eclipse. I will try to hit the thing in front of me again. How about a 13 this time? It's, it's not good. It does not hit. Cool. You gonna do anything else? You're just uh, gonna stand and bang here. Are you gonna smang it? Smash, smash a bang? It bang it. Uh, I mean, I'm taking a five foot diagonal towards Lyra. Okay. <laughs> Okay. The first one, the one that was right by Eclipse, is going to... It has 60 feet of fly speed. It's going to fly around to Lyra's back, avoiding AOOs. And it's going to bite her. Uh Uh-oh. Or it will try. Why don't they give these tiny creatures that are just heads power attack? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Where's really? power? Te- where's power bite? Power petrify. Ooh, that should do. Uh, that'll be a twenty-four to hit. Yeah, that hits. All right, this is interesting. Talk to me about petrified. What the fuck does that mean? This is concerning me. Do I get an additional <laughs> save? So here's what's gonna happen. First things first, you take seven points of damage. Then I need you to roll a fortitude save. Got a card? I do have a card. Can I roll first and then decide if I want to use it or do I have to use it? Nope, yeah, we're not doing that again. (laughs) We're not doing that again. I caught some flack for that one. Any chance this is a charm or a fear effect? It's not. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use my card, which was a neutral, so plus five. Okay. Seventeen? You're stone. No! What? No. What? what? So you see Lyra... Um, She gets bit on the arm, and you see her look at herself in shock as her own arm turns to stone, and then it spreads across her body as she becomes petrified in place. Are all of my items stone, too? Yes. Uh, Just out of curiosity, is the acid gone? No. Are you trying to, like, get out of here? I mean, that's an oh shit moment right there, right? Okay. Oh shit moment. Um, so that was that one's turn. This one's going to bite at Matumbe. Uh, uh, body, body guard this time. All right. If you do in harm's way, I'm making you get the uh, do the fortitude save as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Three in the die will not hit. Cool. This one begins going around Matumbe, so at five foots around him. Perfect. Lyra, you're made of stone. But her song is still lingering. (laughs) Don't forget it. (laughs) All right. Matumbe, you're up. Let's see how long we can get this to linger. (laughs) So, uh, how do you feel about another Flavor Baddix? Oh, Flavor Baddix? Give me it. Give me that Flavor Baddix. But two maids about to ball. Bro, I got one on the flavor bag. One on the flavor bag. <laughs> two maids tears his pants. <laughs> <laughs> because that adjusts down to an actual zero. <laughs> he tears, he splits his, splits his ass. Oh no, then you see my phrasma, uh, spiral <laughs> yeah, boxers. Spiral boxers. <laughs> so no, he took a five foot step, um, hoping to, Open up a little corridor for Ick to come back where and he was starts standing. laughing at him. Uh, <laughs> just, here's the it just feels bad. <laughs> He's going to attack with the book that comes out to a dirty 20. That hits. Sweet. Yeah, we got to start uh we got to start doing some work here. Okay, 15 points of damage. Dead. Boom. Neat. Ickmer. Well, after one has died, he would like to uh, run after the next one. 
He's got just enough movement to go right next to Lyra and try to attack. Okay. Wait, how'd he get there? Oh, yeah, perfect. I, I thought you went the other way. I was like, I'm getting an AOO. Oh, <laughs> Look, wait, for one second, he's like flanking my daddy. <laughs> 12 on the die. Goes up to a 25. Yep, that'll hit. All right, 15. Yeah, Griff, 15. You, rem- you remember when Ick prepared the mansion door this morning? <laughs> Classic. I didn't realize he was a dimensional dervish fighter. <laughs> Eclipse. Should I, like, uh, acknowledge, I don't know what, engineering at this point on Lyra? Maybe an Arcana? Like, I want to know what helps this. Who is the party architect? I have knowledge engineering. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you could do another knowledge religion. Maybe Spellcraft? 22. Yeah, with the 22, you're specifically asking about this? Yeah. It only lasts for a couple of rounds. Oh, okay, cool. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, you are dirty. I, I literally have, I have her rounds here. ticking over here in secret. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take a five-foot diagonal towards the creature. Okay. And I'm going to attack. 21. That hits. Ooh. 23. How do you kill it? Um, as Eclipse is taking her uh, five foot diagonal, she's gonna use one foot to to jump off of the bench and uh, slam down on it and kind of ride it down. I thought you were gonna say jump off of Lyra's statue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, because I w- with my luck, I'd break her hand off. You bring her hand off, she comes back as flesh, no hand. <laughs> That would be disappointing. Just, just, put it it. Back, just put it back in the same place. It should be fine. So you would have some super glue. Tape, yeah, tape it together. <laughs> Universal solvent, please. Just use your traveler's any tool. Traveler's any tool. <laughs> Later comes back, Edward scissor hands. I have glue paper. Glue paper. <laughs> cool, so there's just a piece of paper in the middle of her wrist. It's a one-foot square piece of paper coated with <laughs> sticky glue. All right. Well, fortunately, you didn't break her. And you're out of combat. Hold on, guys. I gotta shut the door to this acid room. It was really choking me up in there. Lyra, after two rounds, you turn back to flesh. Lyra takes a huge breath after being stuck in stone. Makes really wide, sweeping motions with her arms. And smiles to herself, knowing she can move again. Petrification has broken Lyra's mind. (laughs) You guys can now kind of look around in this room. You see that, yes, it's a lot of crates and boxes. You exploring any of that? Yeah. Looks harmless enough. While they're doing that, Lyra's going to heal herself with the wand. Okay. Uh, you can see the acid is still in the other room for right now. 23 on perception. 27. What, what are you guys doing with these perceptions? You see a lot of boxes and stuff. Are you attempting to search through the boxes? Yes. Are you looking yes. under the I'm, benches? Yes, I'm, I'm looking all over in these boxes. Okay, so you're checking the boxes. Uh, the first box you find has a bunch of animal bones and uh, stuffed birds in it. Okay. Which you could crush together and form bird points if you so chose. Yeah, I was going to ask how many bird points is that? Uh, there's at least ten bird points worth of birds in here. Wow. Oh. Nice. Although I don't know if the distinction is that they have to be living to crush them together, because these are clearly stuffed. Well, we'll probably have to hold on to them until second edition, right? Yeah. Like for yeah. a dozen years or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ickmer rolled a nine, but he is... Uh, He's still thinking about the the creature from from last night and gonna poke his head out a window. Well, he can't. The, the windows aren't quite wide enough, but he'll just peek in the window and sure. see what he can see outside. Um, from this level, 
He does see a winding path up that leads to um, the tallest tower of this building. It appears in the um, like to the north of this building, um, and it's like a separate compound. The path looks pretty treacherous. Hey guys, I I have good news and bad news. I found a trail to the highest tower, and the bad news is it looks pretty difficult. Hmm. Uh, Matumbe, with your 27, you're searching, um, and, and you see a couple of mundane taxidermied animals in one of the boxes, but you look a little bit deeper you find a bone scrimshaw um it is an avian skull and it's it's almost it's it's pretty small it's maybe a uh like a small falcon's head Mm -hmm. and it has um it clearly has a spell on it oh okay um can i spellcraft it yeah and then if I can't figure it out, I'd pass it over to Eclipse right away. Sure. Which that could happen with a 13. So it has two spells on it. It has fly. Okay. And it has um, invisibility. Wow. Okay. Okay. I found the avian creature's skull here. It has a couple spells on here. I already know invisibility, but... Maybe I could learn fly. I don't know. Oh, you you mean like learn it from the? Yeah, I don't I don't know that an inquisitor has fly. I know you're on a different spell list. I think feel it like it's an arcane sound, spell. It doesn't sound like something I would have. You never know. I'll take a look, but no worries. We can keep moving. But yes, that's what you find. Also, Lyra, can I use a little healing? Sure. How far down are you? Half. So we can just do that after. He's like air. 40 HP. Uh, off air. I mean. Yeah, we may want to do a bigger healing. I'm down real low, and I mean, you guys took damage as well. Why don't we take care of that for a second? So you guys get yourselves all nice and healed up, and your resources are totally looking beefy. For sure. Uh, Eclipse isn't going to heal all of the way up, um, but she will look through the, uh, dead stuffed birds yeah. and see if any of them look like a raven. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's actually a white raven. Oh, that's cool as hell. Okay. This changes my plans a little bit, but not totally. Eclipse is going to see if she can shove Aranel to the best of her ability, into the raven and animate it. It maybe flutters a little bit, but because it's taxidermied, it's very stiff, and Aranel quickly leaves it. Hmm. I wonder what can come alive. And she's going to shove uh, the white raven into her bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case we need snacks later. This no. Taxidermy raven. <laughs> One day I will get it to be alive. All right. So as you guys have healed and taken care of that, the acid does dissipate in the acid cloud in the uh, other room. What would you like to do? Well, now that we know the trap is there, is there some sort of check we could make to try and open that trap door without setting off the trap? You could make like a a disabled device, a knowledge engineering I'll allow, um, or a a perception at like a higher DC. So the only, so I mean, but obviously besides perception, I do have a little bit of engineering, but not any that I'd feel super comfortable about it. What's a little bit? We have plus nine. You have more than me. Right, but also the DC is 31. Well, that was a DC to spot. DC uh, to spot yeah. it, okay. Yeah, I was so going to say, I, felt, I was going to try it with an eight, but... Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you're more than welcome to try the chag. All right, well, uh, everybody can stay out here, and Lyra, if you want to just be ready with healing. When Matuba comes running out with his ass on fire. Oh, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we hold on to the rope and you hold on to the other end so you can find the exit? Uh, I appreciate the sentiment, but, but I think I can figure it out. Okay, fine. Alright, so Matuba's gonna go back in and try and knowledge engineering his way through this. Okay. Okay, uh, 22. Yeah, with the 22, you know that whatever mechanism set this off doesn't reset. Oh, okay. Nothing to worry about in here, folks. I think I've got this open. So you pop it open, and you see an attic, uh, roughly 15 by 15 feet upstairs. It's not well lit. There's a couple windows, I believe. Maybe not even. Uh, so it's it's dim light in here. I just see some, some attic storage space. I'm going to take a look, but I don't know if we need the whole party trying to jam ourselves up here. And I'll do the same kind of detect magic, go through all the alignments, and then a general perception check if I have to. You do detect magic. Okay. I'd like to focus down on that magic. Um, appears... There's several vials in the corner of the room that are emanating magic. Uh, there's also a cloak. It, well, it looks like a cloak, maybe a blanket. You're not sure from this distance. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll grab those items and bring them downstairs so everyone can take a look. Are you spellcrafting this stuff? Uh, sure. And then again, just like before, if uh, I can't tell what it is right away, he'll hand it off to Eclipse, who... Uh, He's great at that kind of stuff. So whatever my first spellcraft would have been uh, would have come out to a 13. If that's potions or the cloak. Yeah, I mean, you got... You have two potions of cure light here that you can tell with that 13 Easy. pretty easily. All right, and then cloak. Uh, 22. With a 22, this is called a cloak of the manta ray. And you notice oh, that boy. it's um, it it seems kind of leathery, maybe lined with some like black liner. The cloak appears to be made of leather until the wearer enters salt water. At that time, the cloak of the manta ray adheres to the individual, and he appears nearly identical to a manta ray as the beast shape two spell, except that it allows only manta ray form. He gains a plus three natural armor bonus, the ability to breathe underwater, and a swim speed of 60 feet like a real manta ray. The cloak does allow the wearer to attack with a manta ray's tail spine, dealing 1d6 points of damage. The attack can be used in addition to any other attack the character has using his highest melee attack bonus. The wearer can release his arms from the cloak without sacrificing underwater movement if so desired. That's the coolest cloak ever. Yeah. As soon as you said, I, I, I've heard about this item before. It's really cool. Um, but Matumbe's kind of, kind of holds it up and he recognizes it and then immediately is going to, uh, say he thinks he's being funny, but he's like, Oh, I don't, I don't know many people who would really want this cloak. <laughs> and you're like, Ikma, do you want it? Lyra's dying off to the side. <laughs> Not wanting to be terribly rude, but, like, just waiting for there to be a pause in the conversation <laughs> so she can she can get an Edward word in. Come on over, Leah. I know you want this item. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The prize is right. So just know that this does not have a resistance bonus with it, so it's a different item. So if somebody doesn't have a cloak of resistance, maybe they want to borrow Lyra's. Otherwise, I do have a plus one co cloak. I believe yours was plus one as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, mine's mine's good. I don't think I've got one. Oh, all right. 
you can have Lyra's cloak so then. Clips gets the like sea foam <laughs> cloak. <laughs> well, I think this was the cloak that Lyra got from uh, writing the letter to A to ask for help. Yep, it is. It's a very special cloak as well. Hmm. It also drags. It's just so ugly, though. And it's way <laughs> too big. It's way too big. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it'd be better if you like traded Matube because Matube's is canonically way too small. <laughs> but mine's better than that, so I'm keeping that. Isn't yours just a plus one? No, it's the um, oh tape yeah, of your, free will. Yeah, yours gives you the better will bonus. All right, cool. So that's what you found in that room. Uh, there are other potions if you want to spellcraft those as well. All right, here we go again. Seventeen. Along with the cloak, one of the potions is a potion of monkey fish. And I know what that is. One of the potions is a potion of cure serious. The final potion is a potion of spider climb. Okay, okay. So good haul from up there. Real good haul. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a bad trap because that's that gives no save the the acid cloud. Well, once we've got this stuff all put away, I think it's time to start talking about what next. And I think what next is going downstairs and headed north towards Ikmer's um, Ikmer's path that he spotted. Yeah, because that's the only other place we haven't checked in this building. And you guys know that that appears to be the way that you were hearing noise from. Mm-hmm. So. You guys head downstairs and back to the things of the sea. And Lyra's gotten a lot more sea-like <laughs> with her new cloak. She struts around with it and kind of takes a lap of the room, looking at all the sea creatures, feeling very at home. The door enters back into the lobby, and the room that just says Beasts of Dark Repute is to the north. Can we do another perception check to hear anything behind the door? Mm Mm-hmm. Lyra was too distracted by her new cape flapping around. Seven. Seventeen. Eighteen. Ikmer is very scared with a three. Not that you can hear. Maybe it's because uh, Lyra's wishing around with this new cloak, but you don't really hear anything beyond the door. Well, we knew at, at, at least at some point something was in there causing trouble. Um, I think it's time to party order up and get ready to kick down this door. Let's bust this shit open. Yeah, no need. It's just a door. That we're we're going to squat team it. Uh, you want to make a perception check on the door? <laughs> make sure a beast of dark repute is not just a trap on the door. No. Okay. No, um, that's cool. Ikmer's going to open it, so... Yeah. <laughs> so Ikmer opens the door. He sees... That the room is filled with weird-looking preserved creatures, none of which Ikmer can likely identify. There are also two elaborately carved and painted sarcophagi standing against the east and west walls, and a pile of chains lies in the center of the floor. This all sounds so ominous. Yeah, Ikmer will uh, hesitantly take a five-foot step in towards the middle of the room uh, where the chains are, and then percept. Yeah, go ahead and percept. So he walks towards the chains. Yep, just towards the middle of the room. Thirteen. Yeah, with a thirteen, Ikmer can see... A staircase, another spiral staircase that leads up. It's in the um, northeastern corner of the room, and a door that appears to 
lead to another room in the northwestern corner. Okay. I mean, he, he'd probably be kind of on guard, but uh, tell everyone else that they can come in and what he sees with the uh, two staircases. Sure. Staircases, I. I think that's right. Okay, yeah. It's one yeah. staircase, by the way. <laughs> There's one oh. staircase and a door. Right. Oh, okay. Well, Ikmer's favorite, a door. Yeah. So you guys head into the room, place yourselves uh, where you want to be. Yep. Right there. I want to be right by that sarcophagus because I want to check it out. Okay. So Eclipse checks out the sarcophagus. Is that accurate? Yes. What kind of knowledge do I need? I mean, a knowledge history would probably... Twenty-one. With a twenty-one, you do note that this is clearly an ancient Osiriani um, sarcophagus. Ah, uh, so French. it's yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so with with that twenty-one, um, no, you you probably don't. Speak ancient Osiriani probably can't figure out the hieroglyphs other than kind of looking at them, but they they look authentic to you. I don't have ancient Osiriani, but I have regular Osiriani. Seriously, I you make a linguistic yeah, because yeah. it's they're close-ish neighbors, and Osirian is such a um, influential. Uh, Lang- or, I'm sorry, influential culture in uh, Garen that I just thought it would thematically make sense and I never thought I would use it ever. That's so cool. I really that hope cool. that you don't read some sort of crazy spell and then... Uh... I mean, it's going to be a curse. Yeah, right. Are you, yeah. are you attempting to decipher? Lyra detect- or attempts to detect magic on it. No, no. Set off the Lyra doesn't the detect curse. magic on it. All right. Go for it, Matumbe. Let me take a look. Uh, you said linguistics, right? Yeah, it's gonna linguistics be would be a good call. Twelve. Yeah, with a twelve and knowing Osiriani, as you kind of run your hand over the the faded uh, script to kind of match it to your more modern uh, take of the language, you realize that it doesn't actually read anything at all. And then you realize that the shapes are not even really hieroglyphs. They were deceiving at first. And then your hand becomes stuck. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. As the... What is that? Sarcophagus springs to life. (laughs) You about to get licked. (laughs) <laughs> That's a giant tongue. Oh my god. Look at that mini. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> it's a giant standing coffin with super cool runes on there and a mouth with a giant tongue. Like a mimic coffin. Yeah, good call. Because I need everybody to roll for initiative. As this mimic springs to life. But before you give me your results, I need you to finish your drinks, because we'll see you next week. Oh, boy. I knew it. 